All right, folks, welcome back, Rob. It is great to be back, and we are back better than ever, not only because we are finally back, Rob, but because we added a new addition to the show. Those listening, you won't be able to see him, but we've added our guy from the West Side Tour, Mr. Vince Pavlonis. How are we doing there, Vince? Good. I am fired up to be here when you guys said that you wanted me to be on. I was like ready to do it then and there. So, yeah, we're, uh, so. we're very appreciative of you coming on. Rob and I talked. Obviously, Rob. So, the background story here, guys Rob and Vince are very good friends, if not best of friends. I met Vince through best Rob. Um, <laughs> Vince is just an unbelievable guy, great character. So, we offered Vince, we said, hey, you know, Rob and I, we kind of have a nice little good cap, good cop, bad cop going, but you know, we need a little bit of a spark here. So we said, yeah. let's bring Vince on full time and see how it goes. So here we are, the three horsemen starting off <laughs> the season. Um, the season just ended a couple of weeks ago. So we're officially done with the 2023 season. We're going to yep. recap that in a little bit, but boys, how are we doing? Good, man. It's uh. I know we took the summer off, but uh, I'm excited to be back. Excited to have Vince. Um, I think this is going to be good, some good stuff. But uh, I'm ready to talk some golf and just general shop again. Back in the garage, it's fall weather, big guy weather. Um, so it's good. Yeah, I'm definitely glad to be here because I would watch the podcasts and kind of have my like rebuttals down on paper to tell Robert later in the week. So it'll be good to give it firsthand today. I love it. And to Rob's point, so yeah, summer super busy. Um, partially more my fault. I had another schedule change, you know, with the new kid. It was just, it was crazy. Um, so we kind of took the summer off, which to be honest was, was kind of nice, Rob, but we've talked in the last couple of months. We're like, we need to get the, the pod fire back yeah. up. So here we are, we're back. And like I said, we are back better than ever. Um, let's jump right in fellas to recapping the 2023 CGT season. Um, just very briefly. In terms of the 2022 changes that were made to improve, you know, the 23 season, how do you think everything went in terms of the schedule, um, Slack channels, um, the competitiveness, so forth and so on? I'll let Vince take this from being an actual outside perspective. Vince, take it away. I thought, well, kind of a few things. I thought the, the uh, Slack was great. You no, know, it is nice to play with other golfers. I know a lot of times Robert and I did play together, but it was in a foursome with other people and just meeting new like characters, um, you know, that are on the tour as well. And a lot of times I'm like, hey, do you guys listen to that uh, podcast at all? And some are like, no. I'm like, well, you should, because that guy right there, he's the main or second and main host over there. But, you know, just meeting golfers, people with the same interests. It is a lot of fun. Um, I had some Jordan golf shoes that were like Carolina blue, supposedly I call them Chicago blue. Some guys give me a hard time about that. I did beat them. So things were okay. Um, and the flights, usually every round I'm like, am I still in the B flight? Like, does anyone ever change flights? But I found out on the championship Sunday, Matthew, he changed flights just before the playoffs started. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. okay. So that's pretty cool that, you know, like if you are playing well, like you are going to move up to the next flight and talking with him, he was like, it was rightfully so. Like I was playing so much better for like a long period of time. And like, I should be in that a flight. So I think just the more flights invite some more golfers in. Right. Makes it pretty fair. Yeah. The, uh, the flight move. So there was only a couple guys. We made that change. Like you said, after the, um, the ninth event heading into playoff one i think collectively amongst all three tours there was only like maybe seven or eight of those changes but to your point that's exactly why because their handicap was trending so far down right. i mean they were like three points away from you know the b flight like it but they also had like an x amount of rounds it wasn't like they just had you know two or three rounds to right. where they, you know so it was, it was a true handicap and yeah we we made that decision to kind of bump them up into the other flight. Um, Rob and I, yeah, when I said, go ahead, go ahead. No, go ahead. And when I said that to Robert, that was just trying to mask my own poor golfing. Like, can I just get in this lower flight so I can feel better about myself? So it had nothing to do with your system. That's for sure. Yeah. I mean, like I, 
felt this year with the way we did the fights was the right way to do it. Um, watching the scores, you know, seeing them at, after each event, checking the leaderboard, seeing that, you know, it made, it made it more fair for everybody. It seemed like there's more opportunities for everybody to, you know, score good, you know, against their competition, win, earn the points and get, you know, where they wanted to be in the playoffs and the championship. So I did enjoy that. I love that we added that second playoff, to be honest with you. I thought that was um, good. Um, gave, gave everybody a good chance. Um, and uh, Slack, me and Tom talked about this whole season. Like Slack this year compared to last year was like night and day. Like yeah. just the amount of chatter, even like, even as silly as somebody trying to sell a golf club, like that's what we wanted. You know, that's what we want. We want that network. We want that uh, community of everybody talking. And it, and it, it doesn't have to be about finding someone else to play with. It could just be about anything you want to talk about. So I, I enjoyed seeing more people take that up on Slack this year. So I, I thoroughly enjoyed that. Definitely. And also with the flights, I mean, when I talk to people about the Chicago golfer, like, oh, I mean, you got to be a scratch golfer, like, you know, just, you know, shooting in the 70s. They're like, no, like, golfers can be competitive when they're shooting, like, around 100 as well. They just love to complete, yeah. compete, like, play by the rules. And, like, that is perfect, or this is perfect for that. You don't have to be uh, 70s, 80s golfers. You can be 90, 100 golfer, but with the flights and handicap, like, you can be competitive. And that's fun. Absolutely. Joshua, Joshua Dre, shout out Westside Tour, shot 101 E Flight member on Championship Day. Nice. He, he was the E Flight champ. Yeah. Awesome. So, awesome. I mean, and that's why that's why we had to do it. And Rob and I always kind of knew that it was coming sooner or later. We almost wanted to build the market first, you know, the, the, the base of, of customers first before we were able to do that. So we knew it was coming. It was just a matter of when. And then when we got big enough, I think we it was the right move because now you're you're playing versus guys of just your caliber. And then also there's the opportunity to, you know, start customizing those flights. Like for example, next year we have a couple awesome things in stake for like the D and E flight that might not be the same for A, B, and C, but it's gonna it's gonna benefit <clears throat> everybody in the D and, and E flight. Um, just in terms of, you know, pace of play, just quality of golf, just, you know, being able to enjoy the round. Just be more fun. Yeah, correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, more fun back, for everybody. So Correct. But back to your point earlier, Rob. So the surveys we're going to have actually, so I thought about it today, opposed to doing like a survey review, review, we could still do it on the pod maybe next week, but I think it'd be beneficial to do a full length video and send it to our guys on Slack so that that way you know, they kind of get to hear some of the um, submissions that were were sent in and then also the the feedback from those plus our answers, so forth and so on. But um, yeah, I mean, personally, I think, you know, the, those changes definitely help. And even a lot of the guys in the surveys had mentioned like, you know, you guys, this is what was brought up last year in last year's survey. You guys asked, you know, very similar questions. You guys made those corrections like this year was awesome. So it's it's great to hear stuff like that. Like people realize that, you know, we are making the necessary changes to make the overall quality of the tour, you know, as good as it can get every year. So um mm -hmm. enough on that. Let's move forward into let's recap. Well, not recap because it's going on right now, but did you guys catch round two of the Shriners and Lexi Thompson? Yeah, I had to play it on the background. It was awesome, man. She was her driving today was unreal like sick especially into the par fives and everything i felt bad man when she um because i caught it i turned it on when she was making the turn and she what she went on that streak and she was two under and then um you know seeing on nine her missed that putt to get one under i don't think she would have made the cut anyways because i don't know what that was a cut I ended up at two under today or if I think not it's more two under, yeah two under yeah, so she either she made that puck. She had a chip, chip in that eagle on nine because she started on the back nine. Um, but it was awesome. It was awesome to see those crowds. I mean, I know they talked about that being like a gimmick thing to invite her, but I think it it did what it was supposed to do, right? Get the kids out there, um, get the excitement out there. Um, but yeah, it was awesome to watch her today for sure. Speaking of kids, I am a school teacher, so I have to work during the day. I couldn't watch any of the golf, like my guy over here <laughs> who's working and watching golf, but because Lexi was playing, I was definitely kind of like looking on Twitter, 
you know, during lunch, like after school and everything, like it brought me into the event. A yeah. lot of times with golf, like I'm more old school where after the PGA, like you didn't get much golf until, you know, the uh, West Coast swing in like January. There'd be like the skins game. I do like the playoffs, mm -hmm. but um, I was into it this week. Just, you know, looking to see how she did, um, you know, trying to make the cut, seeing on Twitter, people asking like, well, what is a cut in golf? So it was drawing in some of those like newer people. Right. You just hope that they like keep on watching and maybe go and watch the women's game also. Um, yes, yeah, so I was pulling for it pretty hard, but I thought it was funny too, or just like I I've completely because of what her this week and I've forgot that even Liv was playing, to be honest with you. But yeah, I mean I, I mean I just it. yeah, I just I saw the snippets of uh H V three and his uh his uh blatant <laughs> uh yell at the ball and stuff like that but yeah i mean today's only focus was paying attention to lexi and then trying to get the travis scott jordan uh golf shoes that released today which i was successful with so any of you guys out there that got it good for you you were unsuccessful so what do you guys think of like is this like i know women have played before but like is it outside of like the major season of golf or should it be something sprinkled in every once in a while? Like, what do you think about it going forward? I would like to see it sprinkled in. I know, I know the old heads are going to have a really hard time with that. If it was like a regular thing. Um, and I, I kind of understand both sides. Like, you know, the PJ tour is the PJ tour and that's why they have the LPJ tour. But, and I, I wouldn't want to see every event. I would like to see maybe like, you know, three events a year maybe four like a match play event where they play with the guys and you know there's more women involved that would be cool i i'm all for that um you're you're definitely gonna kick up some dust with a lot of the old heads and they were losing their mind on twitter this week like yeah they were asking ryan french like what tease is she playing like obviously they don't even have a clue what they're talking about if they're asking mm -hmm. you know right. what she's playing. but like no i'm all for it i'd love to see uh, more inclusion from them and even some of the other names, you know, Roseanne Zhang and get a, you know, I would personally like if they did a match, you know, the match, that would be super cool. PGA Tour versus LBJ, LPGA. Like now we're cooking with gas there. Like, you know, I'm kind of sick of seeing quarterbacks and NBA stars. Like, right. I'm surprised. I would love to see the best of the best just to get together and like have them play golf. And then I'll come out where, you know, like, I play with some really good women golfers and just seeing the way that they play golf. Like it's fun to see a really good female golfer, the way they play with their short game and everything. And, right, you know, it, it's kind of mm -hmm. like, you know, the old head saying, oh, it's, it's female golfer. They shouldn't be there. And I knew, and I do know there is a, a, you know, women's PGA tour. It's there, but like, they're like, Oh, I, I could beat them kind of thing, or I can outdrive them. You probably can't outdrive them, but you're like 80 yards into the woods and you're chipping out where they're at least probably getting near or close to the green. So right. you're never going to make everyone happy. I just, I would rather be during like these times of the season, you know, between the majors, yeah. no, no, they have their own majors that they're focusing on as well. So it'd be fun to see some things happening at the end of the season. Yeah, for sure. I mean, her interview after was pretty good today because, you know, that was the question they asked, which she insisted in coming back. And she said, you know, paraphrasing, but she knew her only goal this week was to, you know, drum up the excitement for the kids, right? Bring out the kids and that, have them come out and stuff like that. And she succeeded at that. And, you know, she's building on how she played at this whole Heim Cup and everything like that to get ready for her season. And I thought that was a great answer. And they asked her if she'd come back and she'd be like, sure, yeah, I'd entertain it again if the time was right. So, you know, like Tom said, one or, you know, three or four events, if it's all in the fall or whatnot, they break it up. I'm good with that. I love, you know, LPGAs. So it's it was it was fun to watch today. Yeah, I, I don't understand why more superstars don't play together more often like that. Like, you know, you almost think about it as like an all-star game. Get the, like Vince said, get the very best from both tours and let them go after it. Like, if you can't get consumed in that and find that entertaining, like, I don't know, you know, what, what you would necessarily like in, in golf, but it would probably be awesome. I mean, she held her own, you know, the last two days. Um, I caught her on like hole three or four. So I caught a good, a good amount of it. Um, she was putting lights out, dude. She, yeah. 
from what I saw, she made three putts of like 15, 25 plus feet. Like she was rolling the rock. Great. Everything. It's crazy about, um, women golfers. Everything is just right at the flag. Literally every shot, oh. you know, sure. It might've been a little shorter along, but mm -hmm. like, it's all dead on, you know, you don't mm -hmm. see like a whole lot of dispersion with them. Um, which is crazy. And that's, that's primarily like what they're, why they're so good is like Vince said, they're not necessarily, there's a lot of women that are long off the tee, but majority of them, yeah, sure. Men cannot drive them, but that's when they just, they put you to sleep with accuracy all day that, and you know, putting out and, you know, that's why they're some of the best athletes in the world. So I'm all for it. Um, would definitely like to see more of that. Um, I saw, so today, I do have a question for you, Tom, though. What's that? Did you see, did you see your boy today in the pictures of, of him that were released? Who? Oh, Tiger? Yeah. Yeah, did you see how jacked he looked? <laughs> he looked like he was on something. Let's just his, put it that way. His, 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 um, what are these called? Is that the lats or whatever? What lats? His lats were enormous. Or whatever. Like. Yeah, he had a hoodie on, but. Well, one, the, I mean, the, the Call of Duty hoodie? So, I'm, <laughs> hold on. One, he looked like definite, like a definite West Coast bro. And I loved it. <laughs> and his yeah. Raiders uh, camouflage hat? Yeah, he looked good, man. He was, um. I laughed the, as soon as I saw it because I'm like, you know, you don't really see Tiger outside of like, you know, golf gear or like right. athletic gear. So it was it was kind of funny to see him like in in street clothes. But I think he looked good. I think I love the hoodie. I love that Call of Duty hoodie. That's <laughs> um, he looked. Uh, it's, been, it's been as like it's been like what um uh, the shotgun start the catnip season with um what was the two days ago with the home ones. Back to uh, that kid with the two pole and ones, and then asked him the question about that. That was pretty good. I'll give him that. Yeah, I love that. Um, but no, I, I, his legs still look jacked up. His eyes, <laughs> his eyes looked a little jacked up. So I don't know if they were having a good old time, but he looked good, man. I, I looked a little I puffy happy. in that face, man. He looked like, like you said, he was having a good time for a couple of days. Yeah. So, um, our heroes always look good in our eyes. I mean, like, even when Phil was plump and had his, uh, his button, his top button, button, like I was defending him. So I, I get it. I get it. Oh, I love He's Phil. He's been on a Twitter rant, man. We, Holy crap. We tweeted at Phil uh, just a couple hours ago for that. Hey, so hold on now. Hold on now. If I'm part of this podcast, can I still win that prize or am I like disqualified now? You're, you're no, you're pretty just pushing disqualified. the brand now. Yeah. You're just pushing for the brand, bro. <laughs> yeah. You got to, you got to, you got to give it away, man. If All right. If your name gets pulled. Yeah, we did. you know what? When I was, I was probably maybe like fifth or sixth grade, we went to my grandfather's American Legion like banquet. So there's yeah. probably like 500 war heroes there. And they call me on the stage to pick out like the $500 winners, $200 winners. And I pull out Vince Pavlonis. My grandfather starts jumping up and down. And people are like, some are cheering for him because they know, you know who he is, not who I am. And then the guy's looking at it. And he was like, is this your writing? It was my writing. I pulled my own name out. 500 war heroes are booing me. I thought I was going to like run off the stage. I sounds mean, like a big rod move right there, Vince. Yeah, it's that sounds like it. That might have been. Um, I don't know, Vince. Was no, that, it, that, no big that, rod. He might have made you write that like in five different t slips. <laughs> and then you fold them up and keep them in your sleeves. Yeah. <laughs> Wrinkle it out. Yeah, That's, right. That sounds fixed. Yeah, I mean, I'm not surprised they wanted your head. I mean, you were, you know, you were the guy pulling that, names. That's five hundred dollars is a lot of money. This is true. This yeah, is very a lot true. of money now. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, moving on, Rob and Vince. Let's recap a little bit. I know we don't want to jump too far back because we've already missed a ton of tournaments. But I think it's probably it's probably the uh, the elephant in the room. Although I don't know how. If if people are sick of hearing about it, but real quick, what were your thoughts on this year's Ryder Cup? I mean, Boy, I woke up early, <laughs> watched it, and then like whenever I get out of my like sleeping habits, I'm kind of a little bit grumpy. Like at school, I'm always like you know happy and chipper and everything. But I get home, I'm just like in a bad mood. I want to go to bed. So yeah. it was like that for like a few days. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was disappointing. Like obviously, it sucked because of the TV schedule, right? Because it was just, um, it wasn't fun to watch. But um, 
just to see him to get slacked in the first round, um, first round of play was just absolutely defeating. Um, I do have to admit though, Sunday for the singles was fun to watch because they had a for a minute there, he had a glimmer of hope that there could be a comeback. But yeah, um, it was one of those things, you know, like most of the pressure's off. Everyone's expecting yeah. you to lose. There's like a small chance of that miracle. But yeah, just like the first day, it was like, did they want to be there? Did they know it started? Like really? Yeah, there's a lot of uh questioning of um you know, the leadership where it's like, if Ricky was sick and didn't feel good, why did they send him out right away? Stuff like that. I mean, I don't know. I, it's, the whole hat gate crap and everything, I just think it, yeah. it sucked. And, you know, at the end of the day, you probably he- heard it on a million podcasts by now, but it's just like, you know, how is it going to be when they come back here to New York, man? Like, you know, it's just going to be brutal for them. Like brutal. The, oh, I can't even imagine what the things are going to be said. So, but... Um, you know, and if you haven't listened to, and it just a shout out was Max Homa's interview with No Laying Up. They got him on Monday after the after the Ryder Cup, and his perspective was awesome about it. Like, you know, more of like the feelings and you know his childhood dream, and that was his goal. No matter if they won or lost, you know, he got to enjoy that. But it was kind of it was also he broke down. You know, those last couple of holes for his singles match on Sunday, which was awesome, by the way. But, you know, hopefully when they're back here in New York, it's a it's a different story. Uh, Max is Max is always a pretty conservative. I always enjoy listening to to Max speak. Um, you know, I think he does it in a way that not many PGA Tour players could communicate like that. You know, he's got a really kind of down to earth personality, but. He's able to, um, you know, come across as very likable and not like pompous or anything like that, that, you know, some guys could come off as. So I enjoy Max. I'll definitely jump in and listen to that. Um, Yeah, me too. Rob's Rob's always plugging your boys. Speaking of your boy, your boy is the one who said Lexi Thompson was a gimmick, right? Wasn't that Tron? Um, I'm not a big, I'm not a big Tron guy. No, I mean, nothing against him. I just, you know, I'm not, it wasn't him. I'm, I'm not, I don't really, it's when I see his stuff on Twitter, I kind of just scroll by a little bit. I mean, mm-hmm. some, but cause sometimes it's just way out there. Cause you know, he's always for the opposite side. It seems like, or, you know, he's for the Euros and stuff like that. So likes, I kept on scrolling, scrolling. He likes chirp. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Good for him. Like, no, if you want, I, yeah. I, I like chirping. Uh, sure. Yeah. I find a, I find a lot of his stuff pretty. Well, it was uh, what's his name from PGA though that was said it was a gimmick. Was that what was that Peter, Monari, whatever his name is. Um, who did you say? Uh, Peter Ustalson? No, no, no. That he's on the board. That really nice guy. Where's the bucket hat? Um. Yeah. I can't think of it right. He's like a uh, journeyman. Happy Peter. Happy Peter. There you go. Happy Peter. Well, I mean, it proved it proved to be a success from, you know, seeing the crowds out there today. So, I mean, whether yeah. it was a gimmick or not, but yeah, I mean, but of course, media is going to spin that in a way to where. Right. Because anytime you do something that's like not out of the norm, like you can say that it's a gimmick, you know, right. like, like plus, the McGrape's coming back. That's a gimmick. Plus, right. like, plus, it just gives golf Twitter to talk literally. If there's anything to talk about, golf Twitter will take it. They'll spin it and turn it into the biggest pretzel job sure. just so that they can get, you know, traction and, and content mm-hmm. and whatever else. It's it's hilarious. But um Ryder Cup thoughts for me. Yeah. Same kind of with Rob. Day one, brutal. I thought the biggest thing was the coverage. The coverage was terrible. Like yeah. I was I was getting pretty frustrated with just commercials jumping back and forth. And I'm like, you know, especially for an event that was planned for two years, like you guys, like, I, I want to know who sat in the room. We're like, yeah, this is going to be great. And then, right, right. you know what I mean? Like, it's not like it was just in a, a normal PGA tour event. Like you guys had two years to literally figure this mm-hmm. out. And that was what you guys put out as a product. It was terrible. Yeah. Um, but have they talked before how like, there's just not as many, balls in the air at a time like a normal PGA tour event would be 
but you got to fill it with more like golf type type stuff, yeah. like, like back in history or like player interview stuff like that. Right. Just because there's only so many shots you can cover. Well, even in if an hour or whatever. even if it was somebody walking on the fairway, I'd rather watch that guy walk down the fairway, right, than <laughs> watch a commercial. You know what I mean? Well, the right. whole playing like, through thing was they picked it at the wrong spots too. Like every like major shot on Sunday or Saturday seemed like. There was a playing through oh. that cut in. You know what I'm saying? It was just, it was bad. Yeah. Yeah. All in all, I think to your point, Rob, it, it kind of did have a, a pretty decent finish with some of those single matches. Um, Rory, Spieth, Rom. So it was good to kind of see, you know, the U.S. make a, a little bit of a comeback. Um, and then what are, you, what are your guys' thoughts on the whole Ricky situation with giving that putt to Fleetwood? Obviously, I think I don't think he knew. He obviously couldn't have known, right? With everything going on, yeah, that's what I felt as well. Yeah, I don't care if you didn't know. You still don't give that putt. I'm not giving you that putt. I'm not giving the two of you that putt, even if it's a, a even if it's a fun match on a on a Sunday. So regardless, you know, if it's a scotch that, game, regardless of where that match was at, you were yeah, because that's a. I mean, that's a point no matter what. Half a point could it be a full point? I mean, that's still you're trying to get your you're at least trying to get a half out of it. True. Right, right, True. and I feel like scenarios are always kind of like a little bit different. So, like when um, Payne Stewart and Cal Montgomery at Brookline, like the cup was already decided, the USA won with Justin Leonard's putt, and the crowd just like heckling Cal Montgomery the whole time. So Payne Stewart just conceded a longer putt to give him the half or the winner or whatever it was, just to kind of be the nice guy because they won. But like. When you're getting your teeth knocked in, I guess not quite knocked in, but you're losing, like, you try to gut things out and get sure. the point or, you know, battle until the end when you're on enemy soil, that kind of thing. But I don't know if it's also just, like, this generation of player where they're all kind of just buddies anyways. And yeah, I don't know. I I agree where he may not have known the where everything was at, but, like, right. you're on enemy soil. Yeah. Big event. like. You I mean, and ta- and Fleetwood's not the best on Sundays with putting. Yeah, that's true. I think about that either. Yeah, I mean, closing out tournaments and stuff like that. He can't. He doesn't do it. Mm-hmm. You know, or at least on the PGA, he doesn't do it. So it's just like, I mean, God, like just to give him that putt, it was it was infuriating to be honest with you. Did Ricky ever comment on that? I haven't. I, I maybe I just didn't pay attention. I didn't see anything. I, maybe I really just didn't, didn't see anything either. Know. And I was just kind of like, at that point, I was just done with like, yeah, all yeah. sports. I mean, like watching Notre Dame football, watching Green Bay Packer football, Cubs baseball. I just want to go like color in a coloring book for <laughs> a few days. Wait, wait, you're a Packers fan? Packers fan as well. Yeah. Yeah, oh, he's yeah. the complete opposite of what oh, Southsiders yeah. are. Just a heads up. Born and raised on the South Side, but yet he's a Cubs and Packers fan. That's the I mean, show what a tough guy I am. So don't, <laughs> no one wants to mess with me, man. I, I don't mind. To be honest, I, I'm not one of those guys. It's like, you know, diehard Bears. Obviously, Rob knows my Bears. Uh, I just think they're just hilarious fans, but I could care. You know, it is what it is. I'm more concerned. Like, what bothers me, obviously, ND, you know that I'm a bigger college football mm-hmm. guy. Cubs, I don't really care about either. They're, I mean, they're a super fun organization to watch. So, hey, Vince, you do you, man. <laughs> Thanks. I appreciate that. You do you. Um, all right. Let's keep on jump. being me. What's that? I'll keep on being me. I, hey, it's the only way to do it. All right. We're going to jump into a new segment, brand new. I don't know if Rob, Rob I think you might have seen it earlier. Um, we stole this from the brilliantly dumb show and it's called the buy or sell segment. So you could either buy or sell. It's something that you, you know, you might've loved throughout the week or that you completely hated. For instance, like the coverage at the Ryder cup during that week, you could have sold that. Right. Um, maybe I'll tell you what I'm selling for sure. This morning after watching cartoons with the old daughter, Do you want me to start? <laughs> I'll start. <laughs> Please, right. I'm going to sell this week. Um, and I'm selling, YouTube ads, the new YouTube ads I'm selling. Um, my daughter's a huge fan of Coco Melon, oh. um, Miss Rachel, a lot of shows on YouTube. And I've noticed in the last like three weeks, we're getting bombarded with ads. <laughs> like I, 
every time I look up, the show's not even on. Damn algorithm. Yeah, that goddamn algorithm. Um, so yeah, I'm selling YouTube uh, ads this week. How about well, you? Well, have you seen the one where it's the guy like they're like running on these logs and like sh- shooting other things that are coming at them? Because like that's what I always get for whatever reason. It's, it's some like kind a video of video game. game. Yes. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. if I buy this game, you stop putting these ads <laughs> on there because like the same one over and over again. That and some like monkeys doing something or gorillas or something like that. So, all right, who wants to who wants to fire away next? Uh, I'm gonna sell my State Farm insurance because I'm about headed with them with my freaking house situation. Let's so, go. get out of here. So, so, I'm still dealing with that shit. I'm selling them. I'm so, gonna go, gonna go shop somewhere else. Are we? Are we? Are we doing insurance in general, or are we? Are we being specific here? And we're saying State Farm. <laughs> You got to I'm throwing State Farm State on Farm. the bus right you here. Hit the bricks. Get out of here. <laughs> not our agents. Not my agent. My agent's been pretty good. It's the corporate State Farm that I just want to get out of here. Right. And and where does this where does this stem from? Not necessarily the story, but like just in terms of. You know. I mean, uh, long story short, my upstairs flooded from a dishwasher. A lot of stuff got ruined. I did the. Right thing I thought was and clean everything up right away because I didn't want anything, you know, what with any, mold and stuff with the kids. Yeah, it's what a person would do. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm just not gonna let water pour down my ceilings downstairs from the upstairs or anything like that, or let the carpet sit there be a fucking pool. So I, I did the job and cleaned it. Um, they they told me to do something. I did it. I did it. I turned it in. I don't think they liked what I turned in. And they sent somebody out and they said I did too good of a job cleaning up. So now I'm fighting back and forth with them. They get some stuff fixed. So, you know, State Farm out selling them. And this happened like almost two months ago. That's what I'm saying. They didn't send they didn't send somebody out till three weeks after I I cleaned it up. So of course it's not gonna be fucking wet anymore. Yeah. It's you know, so anyways. Hit the bricks. And the and the fun part is the people they sent out was from the south side they came in they, they said they would hire me how good of a job i did cleaning so there you go your grandmother would be proud of you robert yeah not, not, not a gene would be very proud of me so mm-hmm. thank you all right so i'm gonna do a buy i think because you guys are all selling stuff here so i i feel like and robert could probably attest to this what kind of changed my year round in golf maybe a couple of things but one of them was Greg Norman golf shorts. Oh, uh, yes. Belt. Great Costco draw find. String. Yes. The drawstring Greg Norman golf shorts are the most comfortable things I've ever worn. Really? I'm like done with a belt. I like can't stand wearing a belt anymore. I you got them on right now. I got them up. I can't stand up that high. I got them up. Oh. They yeah. are so comfortable. I got them in two colors. I need them in more. I'm so mad that I, I went back to try to buy more and they're gone. I'm going to have to try to find them. Vince, I'm going to have to jump on those the next time I'm at Costco. I oh, Rob, most Rob comfortable thing. The only time I ever wear a belt is if I'm playing golf. I don't even like doing it, but you look like a pud without it or a wedding. Like going out, I'm not a big jeans guy. I don't wear them. I don't wear a belt. I can't wear a belt. I think belts, I got to go. So if I can get away with not wearing a belt, I'm in. And once quarter. I took the belt off, I was firing the old hips with my driver. And I, I tell you, it turned no restrictions. around. No restrictions. So flight A is on warning for right now for next Ooh. year. I get a full season with no belt in. Full, a full Bring season. that belt for some whoopings. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> a full season, no belt. Look out. Hey, I'll, I'll go on top of you, Vince. I found drawstring jogger golf pants. I wore, oh, I wore, really? I wore them. Yesterday, because I went up to play, uh, we started off the 40th birthday celebration with, uh, there's me, Matt, Tommy, and Michael, Vince knows, Michael took us up to uh, Hawksview last, yesterday, and oh, nice. man, I'll tell you one thing, those drawstring Jagger golf pants, that's a game changer too now. I'll come take a look at those. Mm-hmm. What brand are they? Uh, I went, I, I had to stop in Target last week for Ella for soccer to get her a sweatshirt. And I, they were just sitting there. I'm like, I'm just going to try them out. 20 bucks. Why not? And I'm glad I did it. How much? 20 bucks. They're that's like, in the budget. They're like, that's in my, that's in my budget. Yeah. <laughs> they're actual golf joggers or are they just regular joggers? They're, I, 
I'm sure they're just regular jaggers. I mean, yeah. they're, they're like the water resistance. They look like pants. They're they're great. Right. All right. Yeah. Well, I need to take a little closer look now. This is the Costco section of the uh, program, I guess. But they had some Banana Republic. They were like joggers, I think. I wonder if they could be golf joggers for next year. I got to check them out. The only thing is, it's got to be good good pockets. Mm-hmm. It, gotta it have can't be the short pockets. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of, so, go ahead. I, if I find this thread again on Twitter, I'll say, I just read it yesterday, the day before. It was a huge, huge thread on costco's clothes specifically mm-hmm. and the deals that they have in place with like puma mm-hmm. um what's the other one levi's mm-hmm. but just in terms of like their margins they they buy so much inventory from like a puma or a levi's whatever they could technically be selling their clothes at like twice as much as is what they're selling at um the mm-hmm. owner this is he quoted saying this like so basically they try to stay somewhere around like 14% margins, which is crazy. Most like mm-hmm. Lululemon, all that, those are all like 60, 70% margins and 14 is on the high end. A guy did a deep dive into their, into their books and, and realistically they're around like a 6% margin. So they're literally just like taking, taking it for what they get it from Levi's and Puma and just giving it to the people for, you know, you're passing the savings on. Right. And right. Said, That's nice. Yeah, he said we could definitely mark it up twice as much, but he goes, as soon as we do that, it's like heroin. The first time you do it, you're gonna keep doing it and doing it to your other products. And he's like, We don't want to ever do that. And I thought I thought I'll make my chickens like seven or eight dollars now. That's a good deal as well. So yeah. So try to guess in just clothing alone what Costco did in 2023 in terms of earnings. I I wouldn't even know. I would yeah. say like oh, over a billion dollars. Six yeah. billion. Six billion. Wow. Six billion. They're a two hundred and like twenty three billion dollar company, and six percent of their of their earnings was clothing, and it brought in six billion. And then they did a comparison, like you know, all these you know big clothing companies, like you know, like I said, Lululemon, uh, Ralph Lauren, and then they brought up like the numbers, and they're basically selling like three times as much merchandise. But because of their margins are so small, so it's pretty fascinating. If I find it, I'll I'll shoot it over to you. But yeah, definitely. I um, love Costco. Oh, it's unbelievable. Um, you brought up something there at the end of your your um, your your belt your belt gate rant, and that's a flight for next year. So going back to kind of the tour situation before we wrap up here, the. 2024 schedule we kind of we touched base on it a little bit uh at the championship rob we're not going to get too much into it but i am going to hype um the schedule the the let's call it the rough draft one for north south and west um just because we're kind of we're we're going we're having a new approach into scheduling for the 2024 season and just by the rough draft rob it looks unbelievable there's a, there is a lot of changes. There's a lot of shifts. Um, I'll, yeah, I'll yeah. give you, I'll kind of give you one insight, one piece of insight here. So the South, right? Picture the South where, mm-hmm. where we're at here in, in Oak Lawn. So basically I made the cutoff, follow 55 down from the city. So 55 is just like, you know, Southeast of like Naperville. And then mm-hmm. it kind of cuts in front of Yorkville. Yep. That's going to be my bordering line for the new Southside tour. So just keep that in mind. So you have all of those, you know, those just towns, don't, cities. You're just not fucking with our courses, though. Don't be messing with their West Side courses, man. Well, there was, you know, there was a couple like Whitetail Ridge. Whitetail Ridge is not West. Such like, a good, such a good course. Can can we talk about that? Was is was that your first time playing it too, Vince? It was my first time as well. Yes. Okay. Let's let's hear your guys' thoughts on Whitetail Ridge. I mean, it was what we had like one of the first tee times we're always like that but it was just it was in impeccable shape the 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 routing was awesome you had a little bit of everything for each hole you know you had some blind shots you had some carries the greens were receptive that part that first part three was awesome um and the tee shot with the fought for the part four following it with like trying to cut it over the water. It had a little bit of everything, you know, especially with the wind, like some of those holes you could really get after. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. And, you know, 
getting paired up. We got paired up with some random um, guy as he well. He was a and member actually, there, right? Yeah, he was a member, and yeah. he was a graduated Rito, didn't he? St. Rito? I think he did, yeah. So yeah, he's yeah. probably... He graduated Rita. I think he played hockey for Rita. He's an anesthesiologist, but um, he's a member there. And he was giving us like all the, the tips of where to pl- hit it and everything like that. It was just like you could be A flight, you could be E flight. And I think it, it was a course that anybody could play, you know, uh-huh. and not be. I mean, it was challenging for everybody, but I don't think it was like, you know, particularly that you had to be in the A flight or the B flight to be able to play a course like that because it just it had a little bit of everything for everybody. Yeah. I think it was very fair. Like you did have to hit a variety of shots. Like you said, you know, just some blind shots, um, but nothing was like too difficult. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it definitely helped playing with someone that had played there before. And, you know, that's what I'm always kind of like, and I, I keep my scorecards from each round, just like some little notes of like how I would play something differently or just like, you know, you know, right is no good or, you know, yeah. just little stuff like that. And I feel like at a course like that, that's pretty valuable. Um, just a course that is, you know, a good test. A thousand you have percent. have a little bit of background knowledge, it definitely helps. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, we played like some of those holes on the back nine time. I felt like it reminded me of us playing mm-hmm. at the Lynx in Lasonia just because of how open it was. Yeah. Because there's no houses there yet. You know, they're building them all up. Mm-hmm. And that wind really affected that. I, if you remember that long par five, Vince, that um, along the white the fence. back nine, yeah, yeah, that was that was. Um, yeah. But no, that that course was great, and and they were just like not lenient, but they were like you know very casual behind the desk, like go enjoy your round. They weren't like you know it wasn't stuffy where like oh. we're we think we're better than anybody else because we're Whitetail Ridge. They were very right. accommodating right. and everything like that. So it was good. Thousand percent. Do you think I overhyped it? No, not at all. No, not at all. No. Yeah. It, if we're talking about courses, though, I was not to jump ahead, but I was pleasantly surprised that last Saturday at uh, Heritage with all the people that haven't played it there, haven't played there, and their responses of how awesome they thought it was. So I, it thought made me feel like me yeah. hyping the course, you know, was uh, it was warranted, right? So I really liked the course last week and. Um, it's just like a smaller town. It just, it shows they, they take care of their golf course. They are proud of it. I think it was maybe like two years ago, Steve and I went to go play and we got there and it like rain, like monsoon rains. It was like terrible. We couldn't play whatever. And I think you went back with us the next day to play Robert or like two yeah. days later. And they were out there like squeegeeing some things, like clearing off water and like, you never would have thought it rained as much as it rained the day or two before. Right. Well, they're driving around. Yeah, there. they're driving around with the. Uh, the yeah, they were like the a whole, like a hole or two ahead of us the whole time, and you know, still kind of mowing around the greens a little bit, or like pushing water off to the side. Like they do an excellent job of taking care of their course. Excellent job. I think they realized, like in the last, you know, even before COVID, I think they knew they had something like a little gem. Mm-hmm. And then I think with the uptick in COVID and then obviously the the addition of the the patio and the new clubhouse and the Sims, like that place went from, you know, kind of a, a a hidden gem to now I feel like a lot of people know about it. And not only is the course just in, insane, like the route, I think the routing is some of the best around. They do a super good job there. And to your point, Rob, it, it was pretty cool to hear like, man, this is my first time out here. This place is insane. And it's like, well, that yeah. that's why we do what we do. You know, we get that a lot with sure. yeah. you know, end of the end of the year surveys, stuff like that. But without giving too much into um next year's schedules and stuff like that, we'll leave that for a, a whole separate episode because we're gonna have a lot to dive in um with the 2024 schedules. But we're gonna jump right in to our top three, Rob. Are you ready for the top three? I'm ready for a top three. So I'm going first. Vince is going second. You're going third. Is that what we're doing? However you want to do it. We'll, we're, we'll start it off. Vince is a big foodie. So this will be good. So even if we did it. Oh, I love soup. I love Yeah, soup. yeah. We're going to. I mean, he's the guy that takes the ladle at Mariano's and drinks right from the right from. <laughs> it. So let's let's start this up. Go ahead. Ask your question. All right. I want to know <laughs> your top three favorite soups. I'll, I'll start it up. Um. Number three would be a uh, loaded baked potato soup. Um, really from anywhere. Um, 
Two would be would have to be you know uh, Panera's uh, broccoli cheddar. That's always a good one. Um, and number one, number one has to be. I mean, we all grew up on the South Side, right? So any any South Side establishment, whether it be Midway Diner, the Whistle, you know, Huckfin, Huckfin whatever, whatever you want to say it, they all had uh, cream of chicken soup. And oh, yeah. that would three have sons to, had a good one. Yeah, you're right. Three sons did have a good one. So I'd have to say cream of chicken, even with the you know rice, the, the rice one too. It's it's that is my number one soup. And then uh, shout out would be uh, Nana Jean's uh, homemade dumpling soup. I don't want to mention dumpling, dumpling soup. Ho- homemade chicken dumpling soup. Uh, old Nana Jean made it, so that was good. I I love soup, and there was a time when they were in business. Robert and I would go to Sweet Tomatoes, oh, and man. there would be like <laughs> twenty soup bowls just on the counter there, and just two grown men eating soup on we, a Thursday afternoon or Thursday. I was gonna say we had we had like what we we went there once a week, I think, before we got yeah. before yeah, both of us got there. I'd have a coupon for family. us and everything. It was oh, good yeah. dining. That's for sure. Oh, so yeah. um, this is not top three but here's a pro move for you so i have soup a lot and i get packages of ramen and at school i'll take my large yeti and i'll put hot water in there and then i'll let it sit for a little while dump the hot water out and i'll put the ramen noodles in there in the mixture and put the hot water back in and i'll just drink the soup as i'm teaching (laughs) <laughs> and eventually the noodles start coming in through like the little oh. hole, the yeti the kids are like what do you got in there you got ramen i'm like just do your work yeah but that is like i i just love soup so ramen's not a top three but that's a go-to move if you uh have some hot water around so man i like a lot of cream based soups same ariano's jewel they have great ones you know for just for something quick they're pretty fresh they're made there i guess but uh, chicken wild rice, definitely one of my favorites. Um, Mariano's has a phenomenal um, cream of chicken dumpling soup. Oh, they and do, I right. love a homemade cheddar broccoli with some crackers in there. And my grandmother made an outstanding um, hamburger soup. Mm. I'm not sure, like, like beef and barley was in there, stuff like that. And it was just awesome. But um, I always get a little... F- Flash into the future when I go to like the jewel store or something. There's that old guy there just pouring his soup to the very top. Yeah. And then he smashes the lid on and just all the soup bubbles down onto the counter there and he just leaves it. So I so, I see myself at some point being that old guy in line, but this was, weekend. So yeah. Was your so your honorable mention was hamburger soup? Yes. Gotcha. Gotcha. I have no issues with any of those, Rob. How about you? I don't even know what hamburger soup is, but the rest of it sounds good. Yeah, I mean, it can't be it can't be bad. Is um, that a Lithuanian thing? A hamburger soup? Is that what that? No, it was just like you know, like you know, I grew up poor. It was like you know, ground up hamburger oh, meat, and it was like <laughs> don't even uh, bring it. Don't like even bring that like, to this like onion carrots in there. Yeah, no, it was, it was like, that to this pie. Like, don't like bring barley that. pieces. So I'll see if my mom has the recipe still. Maybe I'll cook it up and I'll bring it over and we can check out your golf pants you got there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to go three hole. I'm going to go a classic. Good old chicken noodle. Just a, a downright classic, whether it's the, the big spiral egg noodles or if it's the hell I'll go with the alphabets. It doesn't matter. I'm you know just a classic, good old fashioned chicken noodle. Uh, number two, I'm going to shake things up a little bit. I'm going to go with a tortellini soup like a tuscan like a tomato based tortellini soup um and then i'm in the same boat rob i don't think it gets better um than a cream of chicken you know whether that's from huck finn um same with vince i'm a big cream base guy even cream of potato just made it last week phenomenal it was was pretty much a loaded baked potato um because there was bacon in there but yeah i mean any any type of cream based soup you know, give me a, a butter, a butter roll, you know, a nice oh, yeah. hot soup butter and then a nap. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and a I, and a nice snoozer. Ooh, now we're talking. I don't know. I don't know if Shane knows how I listen to the podcast yet. We'll we'll find out at a later date. But he's probably gonna kill me if I don't mention uh our our my mom makes us homemade pea soup, which is uh amazing as well. So 
that have to be an, an honorable mention. Might not. I might have to push that into the top three. Really? Yeah. Love pea I soup. Think, I don't think I've ever had pea soup. Not a big pea guy, unless unless. Do you know what I'm about to say? Uh, pot pie. You like a chicken pot pie guy? No. Oh, pie is no. good. No. Nope. <laughs> Look at that. It's it it's in an orange chili. So you know how you got the the beef mix, the peas. Yeah. In an arancini ball, then I'll eat peas. Other than that, not a big pea guy, but obviously it, it seems to be a, a popular dish. I've seen a bunch you of them. You seem like, like a big uh, potato and meat guy, not a vegetable guy. I mean, this is correct. This is correct. Okay. Just uh, making sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I do see a lot of those pea soups with like a ham hock base. Oh, yeah. Like oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Definitely. Ham off the bone. Just let it soak in there with some uh, potatoes chopped up in there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Vince, awesome. I already love I already love the addition because you're simply a foodie. And this is what I've been. This is this is what I've oh, been dealing with. For, you know what? You just need to text Robert pictures of food you're eating and he'll <laughs> just like squirm all all over. In fact, we probably have our first event of the 2024 season instead of a chili, you know, open and January, some golf course we will do the soup open. Yeah, we'll do a, a soup off. Yeah, yeah, soup off. We can have grandma Robert's grandmother come and make. You know, her soup, I'll try to recreate my grandmother's hamburger soup for us. And Rob could wear his joggers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It'll be a yeah. it'll be a grand old time. Yeah. All right, boys. Well sign me up. For the uh for the first episode back in what, four months, Rob? Five months, six months? Feels, feels like it's about four months. Forever, yeah. Um, it's good to be back. It's good to have Vince, new edition. Um for I'm those glad guys to be here. listening. Yeah, for those guys listening, I would highly recommend um, jumping on YouTube. And, you know, I get it if you're in the car and it's the only way that you could listen to the pod, so be it. But if you have time, jump on YouTube, subscribe, like, comment. Um, until next time, fellas, we'll, uh, we'll see you in the fairway. See you in the fairway, Tom. We'll see you guys in the fairway. See you guys.